Hello and welcome. In this video course, we're going to talk about how to use Facebook Messenger to engage with your prospects and customers. So this is video number one, which is the introduction and getting started. So before we get started, I want to talk about the end goal. You see, Messenger is way bigger than Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter combined. So you can imagine how powerful you're going to be able to reach your potential customers. Now it's super easy to get excited and want to jump in without much planning, but don't. By the end of this course, you should have a chat bot mock-up created. In other words, you should have all the planning that you need to set things up. And this is a warning to you. Do not attempt to create a bot until you have this in hand. And the reason why we're saying this is simply because once you start jotting down the questions, the yes or no, where should you send them after that, it'll get really, really confusing. And if you don't have a mock-up and you don't have things organized, then it's going to become very frustrating when it comes to setting things up. So we want to make sure that you have 100% or even close to that success rate, all right? So here's a quick overview of what's inside this video course so you know exactly what to expect, and that way you have a better bird's eye view for yourself of the video course. So this is a nine part video course. Video number one is of course this particular video here. Video number two, we're going to talk about the different uses of chat box. That way we can get your brain jogging. So you have different ideas, different avenues, different pathways that you could potentially go towards. Video number three, we'll talk about major chat bot mistakes that we have noticed over the years. And even though they might be very simple and common sense, a lot of them are very common mistakes that a lot of people make that can actually impact your conversion rate. Video number four, we're going to talk about the bot and break things down so you can better understand it. Video number five, we'll talk about how to increase conversions using a very specific and simple method that we have found. Video number six, we'll talk about how to brainstorm your chat bot and of course, organize your ideas in video number seven. And then of course, we'll talk about how to develop your mock-up, which is very crucial to have before you begin the implementation process. So that's going to be video number eight. And of course, last but not least, video number nine is the implementation part of it all. So as you can see, creating a chat bot is not hard to do once you find the right service. So we'll talk about different services that are available to you but the main part of this is really understanding how do you brainstorm, how do you create it, how do you mock it up correctly so that you actually get leads, all right? So that is the majority of this course. All right, so getting started, here's some reality checks and things that you definitely need to have. You definitely need to have a product or service, obviously, you definitely need a Facebook page and you'll definitely need some money to use to create the chatbot. Most chatbot creation services that we have tested over the years do cost money. And we're going to show you a variety of them so that if you're on a really low budget, then this is something that you can use even if you're just getting started. All right. So with that said, let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two and we're going to talk about different uses. So before we jump in to the meat of this video course, it'll really help you know what you can create in terms of different types of chatbots. And I want to go over this because I want to give you different ideas on different ways to use this in your business. You see, there are hundreds or if not thousands of ways, but our goal is to help you pinpoint that general idea. And then of course, make it more specific of what you want to accomplish. For example, big companies 
are really changing the way that we interact with them via chat bots. And specifically in this case, it's the Facebook Messenger chatbot. But beyond that, they are also using chat bots on their website and so forth. But really we're focusing just on Facebook Messenger here. But they're doing things like helping customers buy pizza, buy airplane tickets, even hotels. But here's the reality. Realistically, if you're watching this, you're most likely to be a small business owner and you either want to generate leads, you want to use it for customer support, you want to direct people to different areas of your business. So getting it down from a small business owner perspective, getting your prospect to opt in to your email landing page is going to actually be easier than ever. Now, of course, you can do other things like semi-automate your customer service. So if you have a lot of people asking the same questions over and over again, and you want to make it easy for your prospects to get the answers right away, then you can use a Facebook Messenger chatbot to do that. You can also do things like announce special promotions during Christmas, during maybe Hanukkah or Easter or Halloween or whatever, Mother's Day, Father's Day, or discount coupons for a limited amount of time. You can do that as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with chatbots. And I just wanna give you some ideas, but there are tons of other ideas that I'm not even mentioning right now. So if you think about it and you're thinking, well, I would love for my prospects to be able to interact with my chatbot and I've noticed that I've gotten a lot of the same exact question, then go for it, test it out. You're not gonna know if it's gonna work or not, unless you test things out. Now, bots are also great for educating or pre-selling your prospects, or in other words, getting trust, because turning in someone into a buyer will actually take multiple touch points. Multiple touch points, by that I mean, you're going to have to interact with them multiple times. So in other words, you can't send somebody directly to your sales page or ask them to buy unless they are ready to buy. Now, I'm sure you're curious to know how to generate leads and how to automate your customer's service. Now, there's actually a process to all of this, and it really requires you to build trust with your prospect first, which we'll talk about later on a specific method that you can use to do just that. But for now, try and get an idea of what you want to achieve with your bot. And what kind of end result do you want? So what we're doing here is we're starting with the end result and then we're gonna move backwards. It's gonna make more sense in just a minute where we brainstorm and then we create the mock-up and all that, but starting with the end result and then figuring out what kind of questions that you're gonna ask the prospect from that point is going to be much easier than starting with a question and then moving towards the end result. Because by starting with the end result, you actually increase your conversions. So what you really need to figure out is, okay, is the end result going to be a lead, an email, an opt-in, someone's name or email, or is it going to be a sale? Is somebody going to purchase? Are they going to take a specific action? So what is that action or end result that you want? Then from that point, you need to figure out how well do they know you? Are they aware of you? In other words, are they customers? Are they people that already have bought something from you? So they're very aware of you. They know who you are. They are what we call a warm or hot lead. A cold lead, on the other hand, is somebody who has never heard about you and they don't know you. So are they those types of people? Are they unaware of who you are? Or maybe they're a little bit aware, they've heard your name, but they really haven't interacted with you. They don't trust you just yet. So knowing where they stand is crucial. So if you're going to use the 
chatbot and create a special promotion to existing customers, then these are people who are aware of you and you can likely send them a link to a discount or a coupon right away. So you see how it changes dependent on how well they are aware of you. So all of these variables are important to know so that you understand how to approach them and what it will take for you to achieve higher conversions. All right, so now that you know the basics, let's move on to video number three. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three. We're gonna dive in and this is gonna be major chatbot mistakes. So we wanna make sure that you start on the right foot. So in this video, we're gonna go over common mistakes that can potentially lower your conversion rate. A lot of these are simple and sound like common sense but uh, they are actually very common mistakes that a lot of people make. So if you make that, don't worry, it's not a big deal. Just remember that these little tweaks can actually help get more leads, get more people to interact with your bots, get more people to solve their questions. So first things first, many people assume that their prospects know how to interact with their chatbot. But the reality is that most people don't know. So you need to give clear, straightforward, and concise instructions. Number two, not having a mock-up of what all the questions look like. And by this, I mean having the questions that you'll be asking. If yes, where do they go? What kind of questions will they be asked after they answer yes? If they answer no, what will happen? So imagine a tree and you're building it out and eventually it's going to look very complicated. So if you're going by memorization, it's going to be very difficult and it's most likely that you're not going to get a good conversion rate. But if you plan it all out, you're able to see everything in front of you. Not only is it going to get better conversions, but in addition to that, you are going to be able to implement it at a faster and more efficient rate. Now, if they say no, what happens? If they don't have a yes or no, what happens? Where do they get sent? So in other words, it'll make your life a lot easier if you map it out first. Number three, this is going to be very, very simple. It's going to sound like common sense but it's actually a very common mistake. When you go to Messenger on any bot, you're gonna notice there is a logo at the top of that Messenger bot. Now, what we have noticed over the years is a lot of people tend to just upload a logo and then the logo gets cropped, it doesn't look professional, and guess what? People judge a book by its cover, so they're going to judge you based on how that initial logo looks like. So a lot of times what Facebook will do is it will turn the picture into a circle. So in other words, imagine a square and it will show only what's in that circle. So if you have something in the far top left corner, it's going to cut that off. So you need to make sure that your logo or your picture or whatever you're trying to show is smack dab in the middle of that picture. So otherwise, that part of the image will be cut off. It's going to look not professional at all. And people will think that you're not professional. And like I said, people will judge you. There's a saying that, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. But the reality is that people will judge you by your cover. Number four, going back to the fact that most people don't know how to use your chatbot. Keeping that in mind, constantly in your mind, this is where number four comes in. So number four will help you get people to interact with your chatbot. You'll increase the number of people that interact. So knowing that we need to be concise, we need to be straightforward, we need to tell people what they need to do. Typically when you go to a messenger, specifically a Facebook page messenger bot, 
you click on it, you're going to see the logo at the top, you're going to see a blurb, and then you're going to see a get started blue button. Now, the reality is a lot of people don't even realize that blue button is even there. They look at it, they don't know what to do. And remember, chatbots are new. Maybe it's new in the last few years, but people are still learning to become acquainted with them. So one thing that you definitely want to say is address them by their name. And you can do that by utilizing Facebook's Messenger placeholders. So you can say something like, hey, name. You never want to say, hey, you, or anything like that. You want to make it personal. And by doing that, they will feel like you're friendly. You'll, they'll feel a little love. Now, the question is, what do you want your prospect to do? And what do you want to give them in return for interacting with your bot? Now, by give them, I mean, are you giving them knowledge? Are you giving them answers to their questions? Are you giving them something for free? Are you giving them a discount? What are you giving them in return for interacting with your bot? Now, a tip that we found that works really well is by asking questions. So as somebody is staring at your bot and they see a question being asked towards them that is related to what they're interested in, for example, something like, can I teach you how to X, Y, Z? So can I help do this for you? Or can I help you? Can I help answer your questions? How can I help you? Now, you're only going to know this question if you've surveyed your prospects and your customers and figured it out what exactly they want. Now, adding on top of that moves on to number five. So before they trigger the chat bot or press that get started blue button at the very bottom, most people don't know that it's even there. So like I said earlier, you need to be concise. You need to give clear instructions on what to do. So here's what you do. So considering the above, make sure that your initial message shows this. Hi, name. Can I teach you how to X, Y, Z? Click the get started button to get started. So as you can see, it sounds very basic, but this is something that you can utilize for yourself. Say hi, name, being personal, ask that question, and then tell them exactly what to do. Click get started. So as you can imagine, your next questions should reflect that. You should say, hey, so-and-so, thank you for your interest. And you want to keep it short. So you got to remember that people have a short attention span. So use the phrase above and it will get you off to the right start with your prospect. So with that said, let's move on to video number four. Hello and welcome to video number four. And we're going to break down some chat bots. Now that you understand some common mistakes and what you need to do to get a good head start, let's take a look at some bots and break them down a little bit. So what I recommend that you do is to find a Facebook page of a company that may be a little bit bigger than yours and go to them and see if they have set up a chat bot or if that's not the case and they don't have one then find a bigger company that might be in your niche maybe not exactly what you're selling but something very similar that way you have a better idea of how they've integrated the facebook messenger chat bot into their Facebook page. So you want to keep in mind that you're not just setting up a chat bot to set up a chat bot. You want to make sure that your page integrates into the message chat bot. Now, what I mean by that is that the way things are laid out on your Facebook fan page, let's say, for example, you have food or you have special promotions, you have your product, you have your service. You want to make sure that you have good content and valuable information. And naturally, 
through that, they're going to want to perhaps ask a question, sign up for your course, or whatever that might be. So what I'm saying is make sure that everything merges together and gets them to do a specific action. So for example, HelloFresh.com is a company that you order their box and every week you get a new box of food. So that way you don't have to go to the grocery store. Everything is packed for you. You have all the ingredients, you have the recipes and you're able to cook your food. So with HelloFresh, the natural thing for the send message that they have set up is a chat box for customer service. Now, on the other hand, uh, another site called ManyChat, which is actually the software that we will be using to set up a chat bot. If you click on the get started button here, you'll see that they send you a lot of really good information. They send you articles, they send you knowledge. So their goal here with their bot is to gain your trust, give you valuable information and insight so that you trust them. So this can be great if you're selling a specific product or service and HelloFresh could do that as well. But they, in this case, have decided to utilize the messenger for a customer service line. So really you have to think about what are the most demand? Is the most demand customer service? Or if not, you want to generate leads, you want to ger generate sales, what is it? If you want to generate sales, then obviously in this case, you could be there to answer their questions. Or if you're generating sales, you could educate them, give them free information, like in this case right here. But for this particular video, I really want you to just think about how the chatbot will integrate into your, your overall Facebook fan page. And then from that point, we can figure out what kind of questions we need to ask. If they say yes, where do we redirect them to? If they say no, where do we redirect them to? And all of that. So once we have that starting point, it's easy to set things up. It's really trying to figure out that starting point, which can be the roadblock. So think about that right now, pause the video, and then we'll move on to the next video. Hello and welcome to video number five. Let's talk about how to increase conversions or in other words, how to get people to message you and take the action that you desire or the end results. So whether your bot is focused on customer support or converting prospects into leads, this quick and easy method is going to help you. And I touched base a little bit on that earlier in the previous videos, but I'm going to elaborate further on in this video. You see, the problem is most people go straight for the sale or the lead, which is a big no, no. It's kind of like if you were to go up to a stranger and ask for their number to go on a date. If you think about it for just a second, you are probably thinking, well, that's a little bit crazy, right? But that's a lot of times what we do in business. We go straight for the sale. We go straight for the number. And all that is going to do is it will freak them out and they'll run and they'll simply go to your competitors. So that's how most businesses operate. And you definitely don't want to operate that way at all. So how can you create a bot that doesn't do that, but instead maybe perhaps goes up to the person, talks to them a little bit and gets to know them a little bit, finds things in common with them, and then perhaps gets their number. So while yes, yeah, some of the people that are interacting with you and with your chat bot are very aware of you, they are warm leads and maybe they're customers, maybe they're diehard fans, yes. So you never, ever want to assume that they know you. Assumptions are very dangerous. Most people don't know how to talk to bots. So 
you need to make sure that it's going to be easy for them and that it's relatable and that if they are unaware of you, then you gain their trust. It's better to go overboard and give them a lot of really good information and gain their trust than not do that at all and assume that they already know you. Now, what we found that works really well is to teach your prospect first and then, of course, sell to them later. There have been many studies over the years that have shown that it takes people oftentimes 12 to 15 different times to really get to know you. In other words, what you want to do is you want to give them nuggets of value and knowledge first for free. So in the case of many chats, as you saw, they were directing you to articles. So you could do the same thing. You could direct them to your website and to videos, to free content that is of value to them. Basically, your goal is to make them feel warm and fuzzy and make them feel like, wow, you are different. You're not like the usual sales guy or sales gal and you want to help me. So in terms of what to teach, try to teach something related to your product or service that is of value. For example, if you're selling scuba diving equipment, then perhaps teach them a little about scuba diving based on the choices that they pick. So you could even present different choices, whether it might be the top three scuba diving equipment, or you could teach them something about scuba diving, maybe eight different hacks or three different hacks, three different ways of scuba diving that you've never heard about or different ways, different things that would give them a little bit of an aha moment that they would feel that there is value. Another thing is if you've noticed a lot of SaaS companies or software as a service or web application type software companies, a lot of them will provide really good information on how to use a software and even further than that, as in how to use a software to the max, different advanced strategies or different advanced methods. And they will teach you that information because ultimately they know that if they give you really good information and the tool or the software that they are selling fits into that, then you're most likely going to buy. So same concept here. It can be related. It can be exact or not exact. But as long as you understand who your prospect is, whether they are unaware or aware, and let's say the majority are unaware, then just giving them really good information is going to get more closes, get more sales, get more leads. Then of course, after you've given them enough information, you've gained their trust, then you can offer them the option to find your store, to sign up for a discount and more. So that's the end of the video number five. Let's move on to video number six. Hello and welcome to video number six. So let's begin the brainstorm process. As noted earlier, having a mock-up of your bot's layout is crucial before you jump in and create one. But before you can create a mock-up, you need to do a little bit brainstorming and some creative thinking. Now, the reason why we're doing brainstorming first before we do mock-ups is there's two sides of the brain. There's the creative brain and then there's the logical side of the brain. What we found through a lot of testing is that when you begin to brainstorm things, you don't want to think about how to organize anything or any of that. We're going to talk about that in the next video with mock-ups. So mock-ups is more of the logical side of the brains. And what we found that creates writer's block or even creative block is when you try to mix the two together. So what we're really focusing on here is just the creative process. What kind of questions that you want to ask? You don't need to worry about what happens if they say yes or no or anything like that. 
just the questions that need to be asked in order to get the end results or in order to get the information that you need to give them the end result or give them the answer that they need. Now, first you need to know what is your end results. I talked about this in the previous videos, but we really need to hone this down. So do you want a lead or a sale? Or do you want to solve the customer's problems via a customer support chat? What do you want to achieve? Jot that down, pause this video and do that right now. Now, based upon that, you want to move backwards and ask yourself, well, okay, so I want to make a sale. And in order to make a sale, this prospects, they're unaware of me. I need to give value. What kind of value do I need to give? What kind of questions do I need to ask in order to give that kind of value? Or if it's a lead, what kind of value should I provide? Same thing in order to get the lead. Now, what we recommend that you do is what we call the brainstorm splatter method. So as we discussed earlier that we're in the creative process, we don't want to think logically or anything like that. The brainstorm splatter method sounds just like that. You're basically taking ideas, questions, and all of these creative ideas that you have and simply putting them down on a piece of paper or mind map or whatever you want and that's it you don't have to worry about the order process what if they say yes what do they say no which questions should i put first none of that should be in your mind you're simply taking the questions that you need to ask and the creative ideas and putting them down and then in the next video we will organize them all right so you simply add all of your ideas that come to you and jot them down. It doesn't matter where they are, are on the piece of paper. They just need to be on the piece of paper. So no order, no organization or anything like that. Now doing this will help your creative mind think faster without getting writer's block. Now to better understand how this works, Let's use an example. Let's jump to a mind mapping software and use the brainstorm splatter method. And I'm going to show you this to you in action. So as I mentioned in the brain splatter method, and yes, that name sounds funny, but it really is just trying to get everything in your brain onto the piece of paper. So what we want to do first, before we think about the bot is to really think about what is it that you want to sell, to get people to, do you want to get people to your website? Do you want to get people to your, your course, to your product, to your service, where? So before you can even know any of that information, you need to put down what you are selling, what you're providing and all of that. All right. So putting down here, I'm using lucid chart. That is L U C I D chart.com. And I like to use lucid chart because in this case, I'm just simply putting all the ideas on this grid here. And when it comes to organizing things, then I can simply move things around and organize it very, very easily. Now, like I said, don't even think about organizing it yet. This is a really good way to just get the ideas out on the paper. So you need to figure out, okay, I have a website. I have, what do you have? I have a product, maybe product one. We'll just call it product one. We have product two. And there we go. So assuming what you have in your business that you want to ultimately as the end result to get people to, we have the website, we have product one and product two. All right. So based upon that, when we're creating our chat bot, do we want to get people to the website, product one or product two? So you could either do one of the two or one of the three, or you could simply do all of them. So you can have a chat bot that helps people get their questions answered, but also 
understands and figures out what exactly do they want. And based on that information, you could then send them to your website, maybe an article or a video, or maybe they're in a buying mood. They don't really care about content. They already know you. They just want to find your product and find the location of your product. So product one, maybe they're interested in product two. So that's why you need to figure out what is it that you're trying to sell first, right? And then from this point, you can move backwards. So let's say that for this specific chat bot, I want to have the website and I want to have the product. So my goal here, and we're going to do a copy of this. The prospect is going to be over here. or customer. So if we assume that, okay, most people are unaware, but some of them are customers, you need to figure out, are they customers or are they prospects? So you could ask a question first and then later on ask, have you purchased from us before or have you not? And if they say, yes, I have purchased from you, then you know to di direct them maybe to the products or the website. So as you can imagine, the prospect or customers here, we need to figure out where they stand. And based upon that, we need to figure out where they want to go. All right. So from here, the chat bot essentially is just a interface between the prospect and the customer and the website or the product. And based on this and knowing this, we now know an idea of what kind of questions to ask. So, Let's say in realistic terms, scuba diving equipment. And the website is a scuba diving website with great content. So based upon this, we can begin to brainstorm. So what kind of questions could we ask? All right, so I don't care about the order. I'm just jotting them down. So in order for me to know whether somebody's a prospect or a customer, I need to ask a question. Have you purchased from us before? So if they say yes, they say yes then they are a customer and they are aware. If they say no, however, then they are a prospect. And then of course, based on that, we now know what kind of questions to ask. Now the prospect is gonna need a little bit more pre-selling or giving them good information first, whereas the customer has already gained your trust, they already have your trust, they already know who you are, they already trust you, and therefore they don't need a lot of pre-selling. So in this case, we could direct them straight to the scuba equipment. We could even direct them to, let's say, updates. So we'll just do updates. So what are all the things that a customer is going to want to know? They want to know the updates. They want to know the latest things that are happening. So we'll call this update slash latest products. They're going to want to see product reviews maybe, or even maybe they want to see like social proof before they buy. They're also going to want to know about discounts, like special deals and discounts. All right. 
So I'm just kind of putting this out there. There's no order right now. We're going to deal with that in the next video. But what about the prospect? The prospect is going to need to have a little bit more pre-selling. So we're going to see, say needs more pre-selling, needs content. And this one little block could equal many different blocks based upon what they are looking for. So what else do they need? They are going to, before they sign up or sign up as a lead, maybe they need something of value, like a free gift. They're also going to need to have social proof. That's definitely something that would help. They definitely would need product reviews and other deals and all of that as well. So based upon this, we can then create some questions. So we have, have you purchased from us before the prospects, they need more pre-selling. And the easy way to create questions is to take a look at your content and take a look at the content that is the most popular and the most demanded content that your prospects are asking you. So look at your existing content and create questions around it. That's a super easy way to create content and create questions and all of that. So something free of value, what is it that the prospect would want? So to give you some ideas, like I briefly mentioned earlier, the scuba diving equipment, for example, if you're selling scuba diving, you could say something like the top three scuba diving equipment, the top three ways to scuba dive for the latest technology stuff even that doesn't even relate to the actual equipment you can for example yoga if you're selling a yoga mat you could teach about yoga you could teach about different ways of doing yoga different ways of stretching because at the end of the day as long as the question surrounds the niche then that's going to help you create the questions that you need so hopefully that gives you some ideas on different questions that you can ask. And in the next video, we're going to organize all of this. Okay, so welcome to video number seven and let's organize your ideas. So now that you know how to implement the brainstorm splatter method, it's time to dig deeper. Let's organize your questions and answers that we figured out earlier and based upon that, let's expand on that and make sure that we have everything ready to go so that when we begin the mock-up process, it's going to be easy to see the layout, everything step-by-step, -step, the question, the yes or no, or whatever that is going to look like in your chatbot. Okay, so we're going to start off where we left off in the previous video, which was pretty much a very scattered mind map. Now, as I stated earlier on, we are going to organize it so that it makes sense. Now, keep in mind that uh, the video after this, we'll talk about how to set things up via a mock-up. And a mock-up will be slightly different. It will allow us to actually see and preview what it looks like as a real chatbot. So there are programs out there like bot mock-up that will allow you to set up your questions so that you can see what the users see. And based on that, you can tweak things around. But for now, all we're doing is we've already put our creative ideas down. We are going to elaborate further and organize it. All right. So we're bringing the a logical side of our brain in right now. All right. So just to recap, remember figuring out the end result is crucial. And when you have that, 
that allows you to begin to brainstorm ideas. All right, so the first question should probably not be, have you purchased from us before? Instead, it should be something of, hey, first name. And fortunately with Facebook, they do have placeholders, so you can insert the first name to customize it. And customizing it and making it more personable is very, very important. Because you never want people to feel like they're a robot or you are a robot. Even though you are, and you definitely want to make it clear that you are a chat bot and not a real live person because sometimes people can't differentiate between the two and chat bots are new technology that has you know come in once you're transparent and you're upfront and honest they tend to trust you so we can say hey first name how would you like to x y z now x y z depends on your end result and that's why you need to know your end result. But in this case, if we are teaching people about scuba diving, you could say, how would you like to learn how to improve your scuba diving? Now, bear in mind that uh, you don't want to have too many words because there's only a limited amount of space. So if you can squeeze this down further, then great. The shorter, the more concise, the more straightforward, the better. So how would you like to learn how to improve your scuba diving? And we would assume that they're going to say yes. If they say no, you could say something like, well, how can I help you? Would you like to have you purchased from us before or whatever and all that? Or you could say, hi, hi, first name. How would you like to learn how to, or hey, hey, first name. I would like to help you improve your scuba diving. And then you could say to better help you to redirect you to the right department have you purchased from us yet? So this could just be the intro message and when they click get started, this appears. All right, so there's no yes or no. Instead, they are just merely sent here. So they're sent from here to here. And remember I talked about in the previous video that you're trying to figure out where to send them. Are they a customer or are they not a customer? So to redirect you to the right customer, have you purchased from us? Yes, yet. So we have yes. If it is yes, they are a customer. If it is a no, they are a prospect. So let's go ahead and work on the customer side. Scrolling over here. This is a customer. And if they say, yes, I have purchased from you, say, thank you for being a loyal customer. One thing we found that works really well is to always thank them because nowadays people don't thank enough. So thank them for being a customer. Thank them for, you know, sticking by you. So say, thank you for being a loyal customer. Always put their name in there, first name. How can I help you? So in this case, you could give them a number of choices. You could give them a choice such as maybe customer support. And over here you have live customer support chat. So you could send them here or you can give them another option and say, you want to know about the latest products and updates on the products? Click here, send them there. And that could be an article. So as you can see in this light, this is not really a yes or no question. It's more of a choice. And then based on the choices that they choose, you can redirect them somewhere else. 
So updates on the latest products from that point, you could send them to product reviews or from this point, they could you could send them to social proof and you could send them here. So that makes sense. And that would allow us to get, get more sales, potentially block any refunds that are about to happen by making people happy and solving their problems or updating them. All right. So that would be ideal. And in terms of questions, the questions really depend on your product and service. But this is a good way to direct them and split them off into a different track. Now, let's work on the prospect side. So the prospect, if they say, no, we haven't purchased from you before, they're a prospect. And in this case, like I said earlier, they're going to need a lot more pre-selling. So from this prospect, we can say, no problem. We're glad you're here. And then put their name. How can I help you? Question mark. And then maybe from this point, you could redirect them to several articles or several articles converted into questions. And if they depend on what they click, you send them to those articles. And maybe from those articles, you can send them to a free gift or something of value, or you can direct them straight from here to here. It's really up to you. But in this case, we'll direct people from here to here. And maybe from here, we could direct them to a special deal or a discount. So eventually we want to convert these prospects and get them over to the customer over here. And because they are prospects, they're going to need a little bit more pre-selling. And of course, they're going to need social proof. So now I've created sort of a very simple chat bot that is organized and that is mapped out. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use a mock-up software to get a better idea of what this looks like, because this is not exactly the mock-up yet. It's just an organized bird's eye view, rough draft. So we're going to take this and we're going to make it look like a chat bot. So that way you're going to be able to see the ins and the outs of the, the project. You're going to be able to see any issues with the chat bot by following this process. All right. So let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome to video number eight. This is going to be mockups. Now let's work on creating the final mock-up. We have the draft of the organized ideas and we're going to make it finalized so that we are ready to begin the implementation process. Now you can either use lucidchart.com, which is the software that we were using earlier, or you can use a chatbot mock-up software. And with that, I'm going to show you different services that you can use. Okay, so how do we get from this to a actual chat bot? So in order to get this from there, we need to set it up on something that looks like a chat bot. Now you could technically go from here to a chat bot, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult doing that because you won't really know what it looks like until you make it live. And then once it's live, you have to tweak it and all that. So there are web applications out there that you can use to set things up so that you can see what it looks like. Now, there are many out there. And what I want to warn you, however, is that if you type in chat bot, then you are going to get a variety of chat bots off of many different platforms not just Facebook Messenger, you're going to get Slack, you're going to get website chat bots, you're going to get all different types of chat bots. But really what you're looking for is 
a mock-up system specifically for the Facebook Messenger. So we've narrowed it down to one site. You can go on Google, type in Facebook Messenger, chat bot, mock-up, and you might get a few other ones, but this one is one that we found works quite well. So all you need to do is click on the start 15 day trial. It does cost money, yes, but it's gonna make your life a lot easier and it's gonna make your setup process a lot faster. So as you can see here, it says BotMock. So it's BotMock.com. BotMock has everything you need to create an amazing chatbot prototypes and it comes with an easy powered drag and drop editor. So as you can see here, we can turn this mind map into something like this, where you can actually turn it into questions, answers, what happens after that, what happens after that, where do you redirect them, and all of that. And then it has this nice little preview screen so that you can click on the preview screen and see what exactly is happening. So what somebody clicks on, yes, do they get the correct answer? And what does that look like? Maybe that has too many words. We need to narrow it down. Maybe we need to add an image. We need to make it more visually looking good. So that is the whole goal of BotMod. So as you can see here, if you were to go from here or even Microsoft Word straight to a chatbot, it would look like this. It's very confusing, very disorganized. And now with BotMock, you literally have something that is streamlined right here. And what's nice about this is it's not just compatible with Messenger, it's also compatible with other platforms as well. Now it does cost money and it does cost not a whole lot. It's about $30 a month, 75 and then 180s. So when you're getting started, however, you really only need the first one here. And this will be good, especially if you have clients that you are selling to, like you're offering a chat bot service. This is good to have. So then you can show your clients what exactly it's going to look like. All right. And if they look at it and they're, they think, well, I don't really like this, but I do like this it's going to be easier for you to tweak rather than setting it up all live and then setting it up and then realizing it's got a lot of mistakes and then your reputation is injured a little bit, of course. So bottomock.com, just go ahead and click start 15 day trial. We'll go ahead and just do that now with a separate account and we'll start from scratch and here we go. So as you can see, I went ahead and created a brand new account and you can simply do that. You get 15 days so you can create your bot and, and when you're ready to create your bot, you can start the process rather than starting it before you have any information. So you click create new project and let's clear this here. There's two types of projects. There's conversation flow and it says map out all possible conversation paths in a drag and drop editor. And the next thing is a conversation mop, which allows you to map out single conversation paths and test variations. So the main difference is that this is a conversation with different pathways, sort of like what we were talking about in this mind map here. And this one, is just one single conversation. And if you want to test out different variations, so it's kind of like AB split testing. You're split testing to figure out what variation is converting and which one may not be converting, if that makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and click on create new flow here and project name, Facebook Messenger, and we'll call this Scuba. And you want to click on the Facebook Messenger. So click on that, click Create Project. So as you can see, there are different bots for different platforms. And you want to make sure that if you choose a different service that you need to find one that is compatible. All right. 
So now you can see that we're started. It says get started text. Click here to edit. So it says please select an action that the user takes to go to the next page or next message. So before this, we can click this here and it says the bot says get started text. So it says hey first name. Now obviously in this case it's not going to be the actual person's first name, but we're just going to put that as a placeholder, but with Facebook they will already have that information and it'll spit it out. So hey first name to best help you have you purchased from us yet? So actually this is the get started. So we're not going to do that. So we're going to do Okay, so as you can see here, let me zoom in a little bit. This is what is, is going to initially show up. So I said, hey, first name, welcome to the scuba bot. <laughs> I'm here to answer your questions. Click get started to get me talking. Now, you obviously need to make sure that you tell people this is a bot. Because like I said earlier, some people may not know. And they might be thinking that they're talking to a real human being. And if that's the case and they say different things, they, they're going to feel like you're ignoring them, especially if you're not answering them in the way that they want. So you want to make sure that you're upfront, you're honest, you're transparent. You don't lie. You don't tell people this is a real human being because it's not. All right. So that way you don't necessarily increase their expectations. So click on save. All right. So that's, that's what happens. So click to edit custom action. So it says, please select an action that the user takes to go to the next message. So no action required. So let's do that. So immediately they go here. All right. So bot says, get started text. Click on the edit here. And this is where we're going to say, hey, first name. To best help you, have you purchased from us yet? So to best help you. Okay, so save. Now you can see here it says show next message after how many seconds. So if you want to make it feel like a real person, even though it isn't, you can extend the message. So usually with a bot, it's instantly fast and all that. But to be honest, because we're transparent, we let them know it is a bot, we're going to be immediate. So click save. So when you want to add to it, you click this plus sign and you can insert user says, bot says, image. We've got a button, quick replies, carousel card. We have a list, we have typing. So typing is, if you can imagine when you type to somebody via Facebook Messenger, you see that the little dot, dot, dot that they're typing. And so you're aware of that. You're like, okay, they're gonna respond to me kind of deal. So that kind of just creates a more realistic kind of experience, if that makes sense. And then of course you got location, you have web view and you have receipt. So. From this point, we say, have you purchased from yes, us yet? So this case is going to be a yes or no. So user says yes or no. We're going to give a choice. So let's put button, quick replies, insert. Okay. Let me minimize this a little bit so you can see it better. Now what's nice about chat bot mock is you can move things around, all right? So I could even move it down here. All right, so I'm gonna move it here. So they're saying that this is a button. 
And let's see here. So it's a yes or no question. So yes or no. So as you can see, no action required. So they'll immediately go from here to here. Please, please choose yes or no. And then where do we redirect them from there? So we're up here. So to redirect you to the right place. So we did this, we did this, and then we have yes or no. Yes is they are a customer. Okay, so in order to get here to here, if they say yes, you need to click this here and it'll say message actions. So yes or no. If they say yes, right? And you can click on this as the user reply, click on yes. And if you don't like what you see later on, you can always exit out of that and remove it. But if they say yes, then here's what the text that we're going to show. Thank you for being a loyal customer. First name, how can I help you? Now, if they say no, we direct them to this one. So this is the customer and this is the prospect. So that's the customer. So where it says user says that can be named. That's just a, simply a label. So that's prospect. And then we go and further and further. So let's just click on preview. want to name it, click OK. So now with the preview, you're going to tell the system what's going to happen. So this is the first thing they're going to see. This is the second thing. This is the third. And then the, these two are fourth and fifth, right? So we're going to click, click save preview, click OK. We're going to click run. All right, so this is neat, right? So, hey, first name, to best help you, you have chosen a product, please choose yes or no, that you're a customer, they click on yes, and it says, thank you for being a loyal customer. How can I help you? Now, if you notice, what it did here is it shows every single thing. So, one, two, three, and four, all right? Now, so in other words, the preview doesn't necessarily show you interacting with it and it's spitting out the information. It just shows everything from start to finish. But that way you have a better idea of everything, the layout and all that. So for example, we can see that this is cut off. Maybe we'll move it to this line and how to make it better, all right? So this is something that you won't really see unless you actually set it up with a mock-up first. So as you can see, very easy. It does take time, but it does make your life a lot easier. With that said, let's jump on over to the next video, and I'm gonna show you how to set things up over at manychat.com. Welcome to video number nine. Just wanna say congratulations. You've reached the end of this video course. 
Now it's time to take what you brainstorm, what you've organized, the ideas, and turn it into a chatbot. So it's time to implement. So let's go ahead and go to a chatbot service and walk you through step by step. Okay, so the software that we're going to be using is called ManyChat.com. There are many different websites, software applications out there that you can use, but this one specifically focuses on Facebook Messenger. Now, like I said in the previous video, there are many different chatbot systems, and they may not really relate to Facebook Messenger. So you need to make sure that you find the right one that is compatible to the Facebook Messenger bot. And what's nice about ManyChat is they focus purely on this. So as they are continuously updating their system, they're focusing on improving the Facebook Messenger bots. So if you click on pricing, it does cost money, yes. The one that is free, you get unlimited broadcasts and all that, but you definitely want to eventually upgrade to the pro version. But if you're just getting started, recommend that you just use the free one until you start making some leads and then upgrade to this one. Now, as you can see, it says proper payment for every size. So if you're just getting started and you only have about 500 subscribers, it's only about $10 a month. So as you start to build your subscriber base, as you can see here, the price then begins to increase. And that makes sense. If you're getting a lot of subscribers and you're converting them, then why not? If you might be making that much or 10 times or 20, 30 times more. All right. So start out small and then move up. So that's nice to have rather than paying one time fee and that you that may be way too high. So let's go ahead and click get started for free and we'll see you on the inside. OK, so I'm logged in and I want to say that the free account is very limited. So if you want to see the other features, you are going to need to upgrade to pro. So if you're serious about this and you are ready to go and you have your mock up ready and everything like that, then I would just go ahead and upgrade to pro. But I wanted to show you the basics and the free account as well. So up at the top, we have dashboard, which just shows you how many subscribers you have your audiences, your live chat, your growth tools, and broadcasting. Now, broadcasting is something that you would use after you have built a good amount of subscribers. And then broadcasting means that you are going to broadcast or send a message to all of those subscribers. So you can't broadcast unless you have subscribers, right? Then you have automation and then flows. Now, flows is really where the different chatbots are. So these are kind of like pre-created templates. So now templates down here is a little bit different than flows. Templates allow you to create kind of a flow, but then repeat it over and over again. So as you can see here, we have flows and you have opt-in messages. So it's not that you have to start from scratch. You can start from scratch. You can click new flow here or you can use a template. So as you can see here, we have opt-in messages, great for getting access to people's email addresses. And we've got keywords, we got unsubscribe, subscribe, we got sequences, we have welcome messages, we have replies, and we have main menu content. So these flows, you can choose one and then you can edit it. Or you can click new flow and we'll just call this scuba test. We'll click create. And there we go. So now that we have created the actual mock-up design, we have a good idea of how to set things up. So if I go back over here and I just grab this here, and then I can go back over here. I want to say that the first message that they get is this. So we have that there. Add a button. And then 
We don't need to add a button. So welcome to Scuba Bot. I'm here to answer your questions. Click here to get me starting to talk. So this can actually go into your actual bot. So let's grab the second message. Remember they go straight here. So then we'll add a quick reply. So we'll add this text here. So I added a button, as you can see here, and this one says purchased, yes or no. So based on that, we decide to send them to the next option. So Now one thing you definitely want to do is put delays in between. So let's see here, that is there. We're gonna show this immediately and then show this here and then have a delay right here. So we're gonna move this down. Okay, so as you can see, I said, have you purchased from us? Yes, yes or no. All right. Okay, so now what we need to do is redirect them from the yes to somewhere else and to no to a different flow. So if we go back over here, we remember that from this, you have yes and no. If they say yes, they go here. If they say no, they go here. So how do we break them apart and branch them to different areas? In many chat is called a flow, all right? So if you click this button here, it'll give you some options to send a message, open a website, get them to have a buy button, a smart delay, a start another flow. So we're going to click start another flow. And additional ta actions, you can add tags so that you can get an idea who's actually going through. Tags are very important, but it, for example, if you want to figure out, okay, did they click yes? Did they click no? How many people click yes? How many people click no? How many people answered this thing? You can also subscribe them to a sequence, unsubscribe them, mark com conversation as open, notify admins. You can do a lot of different things, which is neat. But for now, we're gonna just leave it as it is. We're gonna start another flow for that. So we can see, so this is new flow. And then this is the next step. So then we send them another message and remember we say, thank you for being a loyal customer. First name, how can I help you? So we're gonna grab that and move it over here. And let's move back over here. And if somebody clicks no, we're gonna start a new flow, another flow, branch it off, click done. And we'll do the exact same thing here. So we'll grab it here and we'll plop it in. So as you can see, it's really not hard to create a chat bot at all. If you have problems or anything, you can go down to the help and read the help documentation. They have really good step-by-step -step video tutorials as well that you can use. But similarly to the botmock.com, you can actually click on preview to get an idea of how everything looks like. So that's the beauty of that, and that's the process. So remember, as a recap, number one, you need to brainstorm. Number two, you need to organize it via a mind map. And number three, you need to create a mock-up of your chat so you can visually see it. And number four, you begin to implement the whole process. So I hope you enjoyed this video course on how to set up a Facebook Messenger chatbot. And as you can see, 99% of it really goes into the ideas, figuring out your end result and brainstorming and the implementation process is actually quite easy once you fully understand that.